Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. It's November 12th, 2022. In today's episode, we're going to show you the contrast that one day can make in the weather here in upstate Indiana. We woke up today to a beautiful snowfall, frost on our windows, and a stillness in the air while the whole world turned into a winter wonderland. Literally overnight. We couldn't help but think about all the wasps and bees and insects a lot of whom will come to the end of their lives in this weather. And the others that were able to extend their lives by being brought into our research habitat. Just yesterday and the day before, those lucky few made it just in time. We had dozens and dozens of bees on our feeding station here, where we also captured several live wasp specimens over the last few days. The station had been set up just to check which species of wasps were still active this time of year, and we captured a few live specimens, but it was extremely popular with the honeybees. So the feeding station worked out well. We were able to capture some Vespula germanica yellow jackets and also a couple of different species of polistes. And now that feeding station is covered in snow overnight. So the only wasps left around here at the moment are those inside our research lab. So let's go into the research lab and take a look at the habitats so we can show you the species of wasps we were able to capture and plan to overwinter. We'll start with the habitat on the lower left. These are Vespula germanica wasps, German yellow jackets. These are the most common invasive species of wasp that we see here in upstate Indiana. Out in nature, they'd be dead in the snow. But here, they get to live longer than they normally would and we'll let them overwinter here as long as they can survive. They tend not to live longer than a couple of weeks, sometimes longer, but whatever extra time we can give them, we'll go ahead and do that while we observe their activity here and their behaviors in captivity. A lot of times these overwintering habitats are kind of just like a wasp retirement home. We take the older ones and they live out their natural lifespan at the end of their life in these set up worlds we give them. It's interesting to contemplate whether or not their lifespan would be the same length of time if they were in an outdoor environment that was warm all winter, such as the southern states, compared to being in captivity. We've noticed that in general, Vespula germanica, or your typical German yellow jackets, they don't seem to live very long in captivity, just a few weeks at the most, whereas their neighbors over here in the habitats above and to the right of this one are Polistes wasps, or paper wasps, and they tend to last for months and months and months. We've had them up to a year in captivity. Uh, they're quite adaptable, such as Polistes dominula, Polistes metricus, Polistes fuscatus. But these German yellow jackets just seem to have a shorter lifespan. Uh, we're not sure what that's about. Probably just their natural differences, but we'd be curious if it has something to do with being inside a habitat how it would compare to their lifespan if they were outside, out in the natural environment. If anybody out there has any good data that they can share with us regarding the natural lifespans of Vespula germanica in captivity and out in the wild, we're always interested in taking a look at more research. So please leave it in the comments. Let us know what you know about this. We're specifically interested in documenting exactly how long a typical Germanica worker would live, exactly how long a queen would live, exactly how long a male or a drone would live in different species of yellow jackets. And part of the research we're focusing on right now is how long can you keep them alive in a captive habitat environment as opposed to out in the natural world where they typically would die off pretty quickly. So if it comes down to the point where humans have to breed all of our wasps, or many of them to help supplement the natural population, we'd like to know exactly how long they live in these habitats and how long they can live compared to out in the wild. Now that climate change is resulting in a lot of global warming in the natural environments of these wasps, we're very interested to find out, for example, how long is the lifespan of an individual Vespula germanica or a Vespula squamosa, southern yellow jacket, are their lifespans longer in these southern states where they're starting to develop these perennial super nests because the weather is not cold enough to kill them off seasonally anymore? And is there any correlation between a perennial nest and the lifespan of the individual wasp? 
Here in the upper habitat, we have a Polistes fuscatus, female. Unclear if she's a gyne, if she's inseminated, and might start a nest in the spring, but we're going to give her the chance to live through the winter if she can. With any luck, she'll be an inseminated female who would normally have gone into hibernation over the winter, but perhaps we'll just keep her awake until the spring and then see if she engages in any natural nesting behavior. And it's interesting to find out whether or not the actual hibernation process prepares a wasp better for springtime nest building than it would if they just stayed active and ate normally all winter. This particular wasp has a damaged front foreleg on the left side, you may see, uh, but she seems otherwise healthy, so it'll be interesting to see how she survives over the winter. Last season, we had multiple Fuscatus and Metricus sharing a habitat, actually, and they overwintered just fine, and we had them for many months, almost a year. When we let them go, we released them to use the habitat for a bald-faced hornet project that's in another video of ours where we brought a brood into the habitat that formerly was for the Fuscatus and the Metricus. And that brood of bald-faced hornets was able to hatch out 22 pupating wasps, and we filmed all of that. But they had been in there for almost a year and were doing fine still when we released them. I'm sure we could have had them for, who knows, maybe another year. I don't even know how long they would have survived, but it was a long time. These little Germanica, the yellow jackets, they'll have a shorter lifespan, and we'll see how they do. And we'll keep you updated here, let you know how this habitat works out. For now, it's just fun to see yellow jackets in snow at the same time. That's something you don't see in nature much. We appreciate you being here. Thanks again for all your support on YouTube. We've had a great time bringing you content. Have a good one.